A new procedure that's been added to Stack Graphics is the one dimensional point process modeling procedure. Now, a point process is a process whose realizations are a set of points. And in many cases, these are points defined over time or space. For example, we'll be looking at a classic data set from the book by Cox and Lewis called The Statistical Analysis of Series of Events. They give a data set showing the date of occurrence of coal mining disasters. And what we'll do is we'll show how to build a model for the time at which these events occur. Now in Stack Graphics, we have the ability to fit three types of point process models. The first type is what's called a homogeneous Poisson process. Now, in such a process, events are randomly distributed over time or space. If it's a time process, it has what's called the memoryless property. What that means is that it really doesn't matter how long ago the last event occurred. It doesn't affect the probability of an event occurring today. A generalization of that is what's called a renewal model. In a renewal model, the time between events is independent, as in a homogeneous Poisson process, except if an event has not occurred for a long while, then the probability that it occurs today is going to be higher than it was if there was a, an event that occurred recently. And we allow for different types of distributions for these inner event times. The third type of process is called a non-homogeneous Poisson process. In that sort of process, events occur independently, as they do in a Poisson process, except the rate of occurrence of events doesn't stay constant. It may increase or it may decrease over time or space. I've loaded the data I want to look at into the Stack Graphics data sheet. Incidentally, this data is shipped with the program. It's in a file called disasters.sgd. What you see in the column labeled days is the number of days between consecutive coal mining disasters. So, for example, that 378 indicates that the first inter-event time was 378 days. There were 378 days between consecutive disasters. Unfortunately, the next coal disaster happened 36 days after that, the next only 15 days after that. In the time column, you'll see a formula. A formula that actually gives the running total of the values in the days column. Incidentally, if I click on that column, you can see that it's a formula, and I've used the stack graphics operator run tote to compete, compute the cumulative sum down that column. That's going to be handy because that's the sort of format that the procedure we're going to use is going to want the data to be in. To model this data, I'll go to the top menu to describe point processes one-dimensional. The way this procedure is set up, it wants me to indicate in the field called position the times or locations at which the events I want to model occurred. Now, in this case, that's going to be in the column time. Assuming that sampling started immediately after a disaster at a time we'll call time zero, then that running total shows the number of days along a time dimension at which successive disasters occurred. I'll now press OK. That's all I'll need. And then I'll indicate to the program what type of model I want to fit. Well, initially I'm going to fit a homogeneous Poisson process model. That's one, incidentally, in which the inter-event times follow an exponential distribution, so you see there's no choice there. 
Also of interest is the check box where it says event times. It wants to know if the start, the first event, the time until the first event, can be considered as a renewal point. Now in this case it can because I'm assuming there was an event at time zero and then an event located at the first point that's indicated in the file. That makes time zero a renewal point so it can use the time until the first event in the same way that it would times between events. Let's go ahead and press OK and now I'd like to select several tables and several graphs. The output I'm going to be most interested in will be the inter-event time statistics, the trend test, and the point process model on the table side. On the graphic side, I'm particularly interested in the event plot, the cumulative event plot, and also the inter-event time percentile plot. Let's select those and press OK, which will open up a new analysis window. The first thing I want to look at in this analysis window is the events plot in the upper right corner. If I double click on this, I can see a plot showing when the events occurred from time zero and onward. Now you can't see them very well, so I'd better go up to the analysis toolbar and click the jitter button. The jitter button will allow me to add some vertical jitter so that I can see each of the events. You'll recall that the homogeneous Poisson process assumes that events are occurring at a constant rate, that the rate of occurrence doesn't change along the x-axis here. Now that may or may not be the case points actually look a little more dense perhaps near the left and perhaps also near the right. One of the things that we'll want to be able to do is to test whether or not the rate is constant or whether it's changed. Putting that plot away for a moment, the second plot is something called the cumulative events plot. What this will do is plot along the y-axis the number of events that have occurred as a function of time. Now if events occur at a constant rate, you would expect them to follow a straight line with some mean rate. In fact, if I press the right mouse button and select pane options, I can ask to include the event points, which maybe makes the plot a little bit more interesting. If you look at the slope of the line though you'll see that the slope which is equivalent to the rate was fairly steep initially then it seemed to have leveled off for a while perhaps the rate was lower for a while and then it almost looks like it got steeper again. Well I wonder if this apparent change in the rate is statistically significant. To find out, I can put the graph away and click in the table on the middle left. What this will do is this will run a trend test, something called the Laplace centroid test. If the p-value is small, less than 0.05 if you're at this 5% significance level, then in fact there does appear to be a significant trend. In fact, here the p-value is very, very small, 0 0.0002. So it definitely does appear that the rate has changed over the sampling period, meaning the homogeneous Poisson process is not a good model for this data. To look for a better model, I'll go back to that cumulative events plot. Now I'll press the right mouse button and select Analysis Options. And rather than using a homogeneous Poisson process, I'll now ask for a non-homogeneous Poisson process. Well, there are several non-homogeneous Poisson processes, and they differ according to the model that one assumes for the rate. 
By default, the radio button for power function is selected. Let's press OK and see how that looks. Well, that curves in the direction that I thought it should and definitely does a better job going through the points. Although I'm still not entirely happy. In fact, if you press the right mouse button and go to Analysis Options, there's something called the IBM model that does an even better job. There's the IBM model, and that line showing the estimated cumulative number of events does a pretty good job, I think, going through most of those points. Now, if you'd like to see the equation of that model, we need to go back to the lower left where it shows an equation for the point process model. Actually, there are several equations here. There's an equation for the rate. That's the number of events per day. You can see that involves an exponential function. There's a model for the mean cumulative events. That's the curve that we were actually plotting on that graph. And there's also a model for the inter-event time distribution. Now you can see that it says the inter-event time distribution is exponential. That is, the length of time between events follows an exponential distribution. However, unlike the homogeneous Poisson process where that mean would be a constant. Here the mean is changing over time. If I'd like to know whether this exponential distribution for the inner event times is adequate, there's a goodness of fit test also displayed here. It's the kolmogorov smirnov test. The p-value is quite large, well above 0.05, which indicates that my assumed model is doing a good job fitting the times between disasters. The last thing I'd like to do is look at the inter-event time percentiles. I'll do that by putting the table back and double clicking down in the lower right hand corner. Here you'll see what we call a percentile plot. It's plotting different percentiles of the inter-event time distribution as a function of time over the course of the sampling period. You can see, for example, the upper 99th percentile of the inter-event time distribution. As time evolves, these percentiles are getting larger and larger and then eventually leveling out. This implies that as time was going along, the length of time between events was increasing. I guess the coal mining operations were getting safer because the times between events were getting longer and longer uh, as the sampling continued.